Guys, I gotta say, I had all sorts of videos planned for the different marks I was gonna hit for subscribers. I had a video to say thank you for 200, I missed that one. Had a video for 300, I totally blew past that one. I had a video to say thank you for 400, and then the very next day, you guys got to 500, and we're on our way to 600 right now, so I'm a little surprised that it's moving this fast. Uh, I'm honored that you want to watch these videos and that you think it's interesting enough to subscribe. I wanted, to, I had a 420 one video at 421 likes totally missed that i'm used to having like weeks here at uh between subscribers so this is a little different for me i'm planning something for the thousand subscriber mark i don't know when i'm gonna hit it be sure you're on the notification squad because i'm gonna give something away for free i'm not exactly sure if it's one thing or if it's everything on my store i don't know i haven't decided yet but be sure you hit the notification bell down there after you subscribe if you want to be part of that i'm gonna give it away to like only the first 25 50 100 people i'm not sure yet but be sure you are notified so that you know when that happens and when that video hits your first in line to get that stuff if you want it anyway guys thank you so much i truly appreciate it and i'm having a blast and if you're liking it too let's see what we can do together let's get to the video i'm a guitar player been a guitar player for a long time it's what got me started in music probably not unlike a lot of you what's interesting about guitar players is we're so hung up on our tone and i don't mean that in a bad way being hung up on your tone is what makes you you it's what makes you sound like you you could give a whole bunch of different players the same guitar the same amp the same strings on their guitar and you'll get tons of different tone variations just from their hands for that simple fact I don't really think gear matters all that much. Now, a good player with good gear is going to make a good sound, whether that's live or in the studio, but stuff gets kind of hairy. But this thing is pretty cool. Now, it may be hard to believe, but the Kemper has actually been out for almost 10 years. The Kimber was released in 2011. It definitely made some waves. It wasn't something we'd never seen before. This box came with a hefty amount of skepticism attached to it. I think a lot of our first introduction to guitar modelers was that Line 6 Bean. Which not saying you can't get cool tones out of it, but the tones left a little bit to be desired, if we're being honest about it. Now stuff kept getting better. More and more modelers were being released every year and they were getting better. I mean, each each time something came out it seemed like we were all saying this is the best you cannot tell the difference and then something else would come out and we'd realize yeah you can tell the difference but this one stuck around i'm not really sure what made this thing so popular let me rephrase this is awesome i love it you'll have to pry it from my cold dead hands i'm also a collector in the sense that i have a lot of cool amps here at the studio i don't think this replaces amps but i don't think they do the same thing Take for instance this amp right here, the PRS Archon. This is a fantastic amp. There are a lot of really cool software versions of this amp because it does two things really, really well. It's definitely known for its dirty channel and its unreal modern metal tones. It's a great amp and it's relatively affordable within that world. It also has a beautiful clean channel and it's a really good pedal platform. And there's a lot of different quirks depending on how hard you hit this thing on the input. So because we're all playing differently, we're gonna hit these amps different and therefore they're gonna sound different. Take for instance this custom shop Vibra King right behind me. It's not really your typical what I would say Fender amp. It doesn't really subscribe to that typical Fender chimey sound. One thing it does have is this unreal touch sensitivity. However you play into it and your it, it, it vastly changes the way this amp sounds. Your volume pot on your guitar is your best friend with this amp and you're, you can get crazy different sounds just from this amp. And I think that's something you would only discover playing this amp. I don't think you could get that same discovery playing a profile of this amp made with a Kemper. That said, I have taken many profiles of this amp with my Kemper and they sound spot on. But I think there's one thing that you lack. Let me explain. And that thing you lack is being able to discover different tones on the fly and be inspired to really check out an amp for what the amp actually is. A Kemper is a tool. A Kemper will do what you tell it to do, but it's limited in the fact that it's taking 
a profile or a snapshot of what an amp sounds like at that exact moment, going through that exact cab, using that exact cable, going through whatever signal chain you have. In my case, I'm making profiles in the studio. So it's taking the picture of all of that, all that guitar tone through whatever preamp I'm using that day. If I'm using an outboard compressor, it's gonna take that sonic picture as a whole. I can change it a little bit from there, but I'm limited as far as what I can do with that profile. Yeah, you're limited, but th it's not for that. It's not meant to completely replace an amp. In a studio, I need to take a picture, keep that profile for bands that may need to replace that live with their own Kempers or Axe Effects or whatever they are because they don't want to take these multi-thousand dollar rigs on the road and run into all the same issues that you might have with that. When you're on a Kemper or an Axe Effects, I assume, I haven't used an Axe Effects really, all you really need, at least with a Kemper, is a flash drive and you t you've you got your entire rig. It doesn't even have to be your Kemper when you show up to the gig. You can load everything you need for a show with a flash drive and they could be your exact album tones. Now total transparency mode, what I want to do today is actually take a profile of an amp. First one I showed you, that PRS Archon. I want to try to recreate a tone because uh, I have a band who oversees doing some guitar work. They need to do some pre-pro and they really liked that guitar tone as a starting point. So I'm gonna make a profile of that tone, what I used, and, and send it to them to use. So we have an initial starting point for pre-production. Now we're ready to go. I've already got the PRS hooked up. I've already got the Kemper hooked up. I've already spent time dialing the Archon into as close to the old tone as I can get it by ear. And there's a direct out on the back of the Kemper that's going into the input of the PRS Archon. That, from that point, is already set up to everything that we had before. It's going to the orange cab on the other side of the building in the doghouse, which is mic'd up with an SM57. That's a vintage 30 speaker in there. Coming back through a Neve 1073 into a compressor, which for all intents and purposes is just for the sonic characteristic of that compressor. Profile is not going to actually capture any compression happening. It's just the sonic characteristic of what's happening at that time. So once you switch it to profile, it's going to bring up two options for me, Kemper amp and a reference amp. And that's just asking me to set the level to that right thing. So in Pro Tools, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this reamp here. And this is going to now come back from the Archon into the Kemper. So I'm gonna set the reference level and the amp level. Uh-oh, what did I do? Helps to turn the amp on. All right, I think that's pretty close. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next. And from here, it's gonna ask me, is this distorted? Is it clean? Do you want a cab? Well, this is gonna be a distorted tone, so I'm gonna leave it on distorted. That no cab option is really just giving us the option to only profile the head itself. It's meant to be paired with whatever impulse response you want it to do. Now you can change impulses after the fact, even if you do this with a cab. I don't know how that works. It's kind of like magic, but I'm going to go ahead and do the cab with this because I want the cab, I want the mic, I want the preamp, I want the compressor, and I want the mixing chain and Pro Tools. And this is gonna get all of that, kind of give me a quote unquote mix ready tone. I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything as it is and let it start profiling. Now we're hearing all these weird signals that it's sending through the amp and the cab to try to get a picture of what's going on so that it can accurately recreate what's happening. Okay, we're done. Now I'm gonna switch back and forth between the Kemper profile that we've just made and we're kind of in the process of honing and the reference amp. I'm gonna try to dial those in. I feel like I'm gonna add just a little bit of clarity and a little bit of pick. That is pretty darn close. I'm digging where this is at right now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit refine and that's gonna allow me to kind of play into it and it's gonna kind of figure out how to get it even closer from here. So we'll see what happens. Um. 
So I refined it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and switch back and forth between the Kemper and the Archon and then see how close we are now. That sounds dope. Only thing left to do is to save it and then bring it back into Pro Tools and we're gonna reamp the DIs that we have in Pro Tools now and see how close we get. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to the original DIs that were on this. I'm reamping it through the Kemper and we're gonna see how close we got. We're gonna do the other side. Okay, I'm gonna switch back and forth between the Archons that were in there and then the Kimbo profile and we'll see how close we got. That's pretty darn close. I really like that. I think all I would really need to add to this profile in the Kemper itself is a high pass. Super easy to do in the EQ built in. I like to also add like a soft clipper in there. It makes it feel a little better. If you guys dig this tone and you want it, you have Kempers or you have some way to turn Kemper profiles into something else, have at it. I'm probably gonna sell this on my website. I will have a link for it in the description. I hope this was helpful. I hope you can see that the Kemper is not really meant to replace amps it's just a different tool and though you can't have the ability to really discover an amp like you would if you were sitting in the room with an amp in a cab take a snapshot of where they are right now and then take those amps wherever you want without the hassle of what could possibly happen to a tube amp on the road so anyway guys i'm resident loser jeremy i hope you like this one click the like button if you did click the subscribe button if you want to see more click the bell while you're down there I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!